be teaching you guys more to do with uh, some other scales, not major and minor scales. I'm going to teach you um, chromatic scales, blue scales, parallel scales, which it just sounds together. Um, and I think I'm also going to explain what a pentatonic scale is as well. So yeah. Oh, and I'm also going to explain contrary motion. So I've got a lot to cover today, so let's get right into it. Alright guys, so the first scale I'm going to show you here is the, called the chromatic scale. Now, um, it's a big word, but it's really probably the easiest scale you'll ever play because it only requires three fingers. So all of you war veterans out there that maybe got these two fingers blown off or something or say you're missing these two fingers, you can play the scale just as good as any other pianist. Okay, so how this works is you're going to play every note in the order that they go. Now, anyone can tell, like, these notes sound like they're going in order, right? They're all going up. Right? That's going up. Now, if I played it like this, does it sound like they're all going up? Now it's going up, down, up, down, up, down, up. So this is the order that they go in. And then on and on and on and on. So this is up and that's down. Now, the way that we play this, there's pretty much a couple of rules. The third finger always goes and always plays all the black keys. All the black keys are played by the third finger. So remember that. Rule number one, third finger plays all black keys. If you're playing any other finger on the black keys, hmm, I don't know. <laughs> if you're playing them, then uh, I don't know, just don't. <laughs> I can't think of a joke. Oh, that's bad. Anyway. Okay, so your third finger plays all the black keys. Now, your thumb is going to play most of the white keys. Not all of them, most of them. Now, your second finger gets a little bit of the action. Just a little bit. And it gets to play some white keys too. Okay? It's like, yay, I get to play some too. Woohoo! <laughs> okay, so how this works is we're going to put our thumb on the white key. Now, we're going to put our third finger on the black key. Now make sure that your fingers are curved and they should be relaxed. I was only holding that up so you could see. I don't actually recommend doing this when you're playing. That's not really the... Just try to relax. Just let your fingers relax and just shake them loose if you have to. Okay, now play the thumb up there. Now you're going to play your third on the black note. You're going to play your thumb on this black white note. Then three here. Now, here's where it gets interesting. So the second finger plays whenever you have two white notes together. And this is the rule. They never do this. They never cross. If your fingers ever cross like this, pretend that they have wires on a bomb or something, and you're crossing the wires, and boom! Your hand blows, blows up and then, ah, you have this bloody stump and you're just like, ah, ah. Okay. Anyway, there's your vivid picture for that. So don't ever cross your fingers. Always keep them like this. Okay? Whatever hand you're using, you always put them in a row. So, if you're going up, you go. If you're coming down, okay? If you saw me put my thumb there, why was I putting it and not doing putting my second so I could go there? It's because I'm stopping there. If I was going to keep going, then I would just do this. I would just put my second finger there. But since I'm stopping there, I just put my thumb there because it's more comfortable for me. You don't have to. You can put your second if you want. It doesn't really matter. Okay. So, I just start with my thumb because that's where note I'm starting on. Okay, so... 
Now we'll put our second, then three up here, thumb there, three, one, three, one. Oh look, there's two white keys. Two, one, or sorry, two, three. One, three, one, two, three, one, three, one, three, one, two. Now we've got the C, and we've gone up two octaves. So let's come back down. <laughs> Did you like the suspense there? Yeah, I'm a little bit rusty on my chromatic scales, actually. Okay. So, now, how do we do them effectively? Alright. Well, you want to avoid this motion. That's not just really not a good idea. Because what's going to happen is when you try to play it fast, it's just going to go crazy. Like... Hmm, yeah, maybe not. So what you want to do is actually try to imagine waving your hand across the keyboard. Try waving it like this, I dare you. Wave it back and forth as fast as you can. Now, woo, you're getting sleepy. Yeah, because my video is so boring. Okay. <laughs> now, I want you to do this again, but this time I want you to go up and down. Like this. So you're going... As fast as you can, up and down, your whole arm. Not your wrist, your arm. While you're going back and forth. Now tell me, which is easier? Oh, you can't tell me. Darn. Okay, well, I already know which is easier. Moving your hand ver like from side to side with no up and down motion. So what I'm trying to get at here is we don't want to do this up and down motion kind of thing. So what we want to do is picture that this part, the, the part um, right here where my knuckles are, picture that as a spaceship, like an alien spaceship. And then these fingers are going to abduct the notes. Okay, So they move, but my hand doesn't move up or down. Okay, so how it goes. Wow, this is extremely complicated. I'm leaning sideways with the camera, one hand, trying to look at the view screen and the keys at the same time. Anyway. <laughs> So if you notice, there's very little motion in my hand. It's all sm small motions. Now here would be a bad example. Bad motion. So it's all about just keeping it nice and level. And just relax. Just like that. Okay, so that is chromatic scales. And it's the exact same way with the left hand too. So the left hand just goes thumb on the white keys, three on the black, and then whenever we get to two, we just put our one and two, however they land. See, we don't do this here. We always keep them normal. Same rules. And the awesome part is, it doesn't really matter where you start. If you start on a black key, you start with your third. If you start on, you know, a white key, you start with your thumb. It's pretty simple. The only, um, like, uh, exception would be if you started on this one right here, like E. Then you would use your second finger to start off with. But that's about it. That's chromatic scales. Okay. So let's now, one thing I wanted to say for one more exercise with the chromatic scale is how you should practice this is start on one note, go up two octaves, so up to here, and then come back down. Now, as you come back down, then you're going to start again and go up to this note, and then start on this note and go, and then stop on this one, the D flat, and then you'd be going on this note. Here. 
And that's basically how you're going to go. You just keep going up and down until you usually get to here or your hands start to get really sore and burning. Now, don't do this too much because it can hurt your hand if you do it too much. Just do it. It's good for building a little bit of finger dexterity with these three fingers. So just make sure that your hand is level and do it slowly to start off with. And uh, if your hand starts to hurt, stop right away, okay? Just stop if it starts to hurt. So yeah, that's good for finger endurance and it's good for finger dexterity and also to do your chromatic scale, which you'll use quite a bit in different pieces, especially Chopin or chromatic, uh, chromatically written pieces. So that's Okay, that. so the next scale I'm going to teach you is called the blue scale. Now you will probably recognize this one and it's kind of a cool scale to have fun with. Okay? Now, uh, what you'll do, the blue scale sort of goes like this. Now in C major, it's going to be, it's going to start on the C. Now it's going to go up to a minor third or like it would be the third note, but my, uh, the third note of the major scale, but take one note back. So it's a semitone lower, so it goes. Okay. Now we're going to go up to the F. Then we're going to go to the F sharp. Then the G. So this is the fourth and the fifth note, and then the note in between. Then we go up to the E flat, and then back to the C. So here's what it sounds like. Cool, huh? So the fingering I used for that is I used one here, three on the, uh, the E flat, and I put my thumb under here. Now you are just with the chromatic scales. I used that. So I just use that. See how I'm just moving my thumb and three over? Then I put my third finger here. Woohoo! So that's some fun that you can have with that. So that is the blue scale. Awesome good time. <laughs> I hope you guys learned something uh, useful from this one. And uh, yeah, hope you like my green tie. I was watching The Matrix a couple days ago, and I'm like, ooh, my new lesson I'm gonna bust out the green tie and the black, just like uh, Morpheus. <laughs> I don't know if you guys ever saw that, but yeah, anyway. So that's uh, the piano lesson for today. Hope you guys uh, found it helpful. Keep practicing, and yeah. So, um, I just suggest probably about uh, at least half an hour a day of practice. So practice all these things that we've been going over, the different scales, playing them, try to get a nice even touch, even sound. No rushing, don't rush through it. Think of someone that's, you know, playing darts. Or is it going to make more sense to go really fast and just throw those darts and hope they hit the target? Or you, does it make more sense to get accuracy first? Accuracy first will build speed later, okay? So you only get accuracy quickly if you start with accuracy slowly first, okay? So that's the important part. All right, so take care, guys. Bye-bye.